in Leviticus chapter number 6, look at verse number 8. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning, and the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. And the priest shall put on his linen garment, and his linen breeches shall he put upon his flesh, and take up the ashes which the fire hath consumed with the burnt offering on the altar, and he shall put them beside the altar. And he shall put off his garments, and put on other garments, and carry forth the ashes without the camp into a clean place. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it, and shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it and he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Here the Bible gives some commands about the fire. In verses 1 through 7 of chapter 6, we're given the meaning of the fire. I won't read the verses for time's sake, but we understand that uh, if a man had sinned, if he had wronged God, if he had wronged his neighbor, uh, there was a priest that was to be over that fire and that man could come to the altar and the priest would make a sacrifice for him. And I tell you what, somebody could come to the altar burdened down with sin, burdened down with trouble in their soul, but I mean they could leave, amen, singing, you ask me why I'm happy, I'll just tell you why, it's because my sins are gone. Now let me say this tonight, I'm glad we ain't got to run down to a priest, amen, I'm glad we've got direct access to the throne room of God because of the blood of Jesus because of the cross of Calvary we can go straight to God bring our sin bring our cares bring our sorrow to him amen I'm glad tonight because of Jesus uh, we have that privilege you got sin in your life tonight my soul four weeks of revival I mean what are you holding out on <laughs> but if you do you can bring it to Jesus you ain't got to go to a priest you ain't got to come to me you ain't got to go to the pay. you come to Jesus amen we got a mediator in Jesus Christ but that was the purpose the meaning of the fire but then in the verses we read he gives a mandate about the fire he said it shall never go out Never go out. Man, I remember when I started Bible college that first day, the professor said, uh, you know, if I say something real important, you know, you might want to jot that down. It'll probably be on a test. And uh, somebody said, how do we know if it's important? He said, look, if I, if I say it more than three times, you better mark it down. That means it's important. And here, the fire is mentioned three different times. And the command is, it shall ever be burning shall never go out. Just for a few minutes tonight, I want to preach on don't let the fire go out. Don't let the fire go out. Amen. Man, there's been a fire kindling around here. There's been a fire. Amen. The flames been growing high around here. People getting saved. People getting right with God. Backslidden, coming home. Amen. I mean, it has been a good revival. It, it ain't been just a meeting. Amen. It's been a move of God. We need more of that in this land. Amen. There's plenty of revival meetings going on, but we need a move of God. And man, God has done that around here. We shouldn't take it for granted. And we shouldn't let the fire go out. The, the, the scheduled meetings may stop. They will at some point. But it doesn't mean that revival has to stop. Man, I've heard tell of churches that have been in revival for years. Now, they only came to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, midweek service. But they said every time they come in, man, you could just feel the revival fires burning. Leonard Ravenhill said many years ago, I believe the world is going to hell fire because the church has lost Holy Ghost fire. Vance Havner said, We are suffering today from a species of Christianity that's as dry as dust, as cold as ice, pale as a corpse, and as dead as King Tut. We are suffering not from a lack of correct heads, but a lack of consumed hearts. Now listen, I, I don't know what's going on down at all the other churches and all the other denominations, but I do know independent Bible-believing Baptists, and I know too often we've got our theology right, we've got our doctrine right, and praise God for it, by the way. But too often, amen, we got everything right up here, but our hearts are not consumed. Our hearts are not on fire, and it's been a blessing, amen, to get in here and some, see some some people that want to worship God and want to go out there and live for God and I say don't let the fire go out 
Man, I remember one time I went to this restaurant. A friend of mine had recommended it, and he said, man, this is the best fried chicken you'll ever eat. That, that's something for a Baptist preacher, amen, because we like fried chicken. And, man, they brought that chicken. It looked good. It smelt good. And I was excited about this fried chicken I'd heard so much about. And my wife bit into hers first. She put her fork in it, and it was frozen on the inside. Man, it looked good on the outside, but it was nasty on the inside. i tell you something about fire. It heats up food. It heats things up. It has a purpose. i tell you what, I've heard some singing. People get up and sing, man, it looks good. It sounds good. But it's just cold. Amen. Nothing wrong with sounding good. But is there any fire on it? Man, I've heard preaching. I mean, everything was right. The, the, the outline was good. The theology cor- was correct. But it was just a cold, dead, dry message. Don't let the fire go out. Listen, number one, stay by the fire. If the fire is going to keep going, you've got to stay by the fire. The command in verse 9 was this. He said, command Aaron and his son, saying, this is the law of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night until the morning, and the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. They had to stay by the fire. You want to stay on fire? You've got to stay around the fire. Amen. Man, you need, you need to make sure the places that you attend are, are on fire. Man, you've got a good church. Hang around where the fire is burning. Don't go off and find some dead mess. Don't go off, amen, and try to find something that's just imitating what we do, but it's not the real thing. You stay around the right place. Stay around the right people. Hey, I'll tell you what will put the fire out real quick. Go out here and get around the wrong people. Get around the wrong crowd. Man, they'll put a wet blanket on your fire. Make sure you're around people. People, amen, that love the Bible, love preaching, love God, love the church. Amen, you stay away from that crowd that's critical, that's critical of everything going on. Try to avoid that crowd. Stay by the fire. Man, Paul told that church at Galatia, he said, you did run well. Who hindered you? The man, you was running good. He didn't say what hindered you. A lot of times we preach on those what's. Those watts will get you in trouble, but it's usually the who that gets you messed up on the watts. Amen. You show me somebody that got away from God, now they're an alcoholic or they're a dopehead, or or maybe they're not doing those things, but they're just not on fire for God anymore. Usually there's somebody off in a corner that influenced them in a wrong direction. Stay by the fire. Don't let the fire go out. Number two, you're going to have to secure the fire. Man, what God has done around here the last couple months, amen, you're going to have to protect it because the devil does not like what's going on here. He don't like people getting saved. He don't like people drawing closer to God. He don't like the church house full. He don't like people being in church on Friday night. He wants you down at the bar. Amen. He wants you down, amen, at the nightclub. As a matter of fact, he'll even be content with you just sitting at home. He don't like it when you're at church on Friday night. You got to protect this thing, secure it. Look at verse 10 again. It said, And the priest shall put on his linen garment, and his linen breeches shall he put upon his flesh, and take up the ashes which the fire had consumed with the burnt offering on the altar, and he shall put them beside the altar. In verse 11, He shall put off his garments, and put on other garments, and carry forth the ashes without the camp into a clean place. You know why he had to carry them ashes out? Because ashes will smother a fire. If you don't take care of the ashes in your fireplace, you ain't going to get a good fire going. It smothers it. And you know what? We've got to protect what God's done. Here in your church, you've got to protect it. Protect it against water. Amen. A lot of, a lot of watered-down things coming into our churches nowadays. I mean, we've got watered-down Bibles coming in, and people are just embracing them left and right. Amen. And I'm not saying if somebody comes through the doors of this church and maybe they got something other than a King James Bible, don't meet them at the door and say, we don't use them other versions around here. Amen. You'll just scare them out the door. Man, you let the Lord deal with them. Amen. You let the preacher get up and preach and teach. Amen. They'll eventually get it. The light will come on or else they'll get mad and leave one. But at least let them have a chance to sit and listen and learn. Amen. But I tell you what, you start embracing them watered-down Bibles, it'll affect every aspect of the church. We got watered-down music coming in the church. It's uh, music that just there's no doctrine in it. There's no conviction in it. You know them old hymns? They had conviction in them. 
A lot of this stuff they're singing in these new modern churches, man, it's all about me, 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 I, 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 my feelings, my feelings. It ain't about God. Don't bring in that watered down music. Man, keep the music right. I love the music at Emmanuel Baptist Church. Don't change it. Amen. Keep it right. You got to protect it. Protect it against watered down preaching. Man, preaching needs to have the power of God on it. Amen. Touch of God. The anointing. We need that. And sometimes, man, the preacher's going to step on your toes. You can't have a meeting like this without some sin-killing preaching. Right, right. Amen. And uh, too, too many churches, I'm talking about independent Baptist churches, are telling the preacher, just lighten up. Just lighten up. Being too hard on us. Well, I tell you what, this world's hard on you. And people are getting sucked in by the things of the world and you got a pastor, you got a man of God that wants to protect you and your family because he loves you, he cares about you, he's not trying to be arrogant, he's not trying to prove how tough he is or how controversial he can be. He's just trying to help you and your family. He's protecting you. you got to protect it against water. got to protect it against the wind. Now in the Bible, there's some good kinds of wind. We talk about the wind of the Holy Ghost. I like it when that wind blows in. It's wonderful when that happens. But there are other kind of winds that'll mess things up. You know, a little bit of wind, it'll help a fire. If you're trying to get a fire going and it's just not taking off and a breeze will blow, it'll, it'll, man, it'll get it going. But too much wind, it'll blow it out of control. In Leviticus chapter number 10, look there just real quick. We see where God actually sent the fire down. In chapter 7, we're looking at the instructions about the fire. But in chapter 10, the fire actually falls. Actually, chapter 9, verse 24, said, And there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat, which when all the people saw, they shouted and fell on their faces. I'm not seeing a lot of falling on our faces anymore. Even when you do, of course, not a lot of shouting going on in our Baptist churches anymore. But I tell you what, even when sometimes you see it, there's not a lot of falling on our faces. But look at chapter 10 and verse number 1. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. You know what they did? They took a little bit of the fire that God sent down the real thing, but then they tried to mix it with their own little ingredients to make it what they wanted it to be because they weren't satisfied with the real thing. There's a lot of strange fire coming in today, amen. I'm going to tell you something that's more dangerous. I personally believe it may be as dangerous, maybe more dangerous than even Joel Osteen or Rick Warren and some of these progressive liberals is somebody in our own movement that wants to take a little bit of that old time fire that they grew up under, but then they want to mix it with a little bit of this new stuff and they try to bring it together and we're seeing a, a generation of young people being sucked into that. I mean, the Pied Piper is played and they're following him on a slick road to hell and compromise I say we got to protect the fire against the wind don't get caught up in all that mess then you got to strengthen the fire back in chapter 6 and verse number 12 he said, And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it, it shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning, and lay the burnt offering in order upon it, and he shall burn there upon the fat of the peace offerings. He was to add things to the fire. I mean, a fire has to have something to consume. Amen. I tell you what, we gotta, we got to add to this fire. I tell you what, you need to get in the Word of God. Man, when you get saved, this book ought to become your best friend. Amen. This is not something that we just use as like a, you know, an it's not an accessory. I think even in church sometimes the Word of God's nothing more than an accessory for us. I tell you what, this is something it shouldn't just come to church with us on Sunday. It shouldn't just be opened up and read on Sunday or Wednesday night. Man, it's, it shouldn't lay in the back seat of our car. shouldn't lay on the coffee table. Amen. Each day of our life we ought to be getting in to the Word of God and getting the Word of God down into us. Amen. I tell you what, it'll keep that fire burning hot. It'll keep it burning high. Amen. Hey, you need the Word of God. I need the Word of God. Amen. Well, get in the book. 
and get the book in you. Strengthen that fire. You ain't going to be on fire without the Word of God. Amen. Man, Buddy Blunkall went to heaven last year. Brother Buddy was on a radio show one time. They were interviewing a couple preachers and they asked the preachers, just give us one, one word of advice before we close out today. What's one thing you can say about modern day Christianity? What's your thoughts? Brother Buddy said, Christians today are Bible blockheads. Wow. <laughs> That's deep, ain't it? It's true. Right. Hey Amen. A lot, a lot of Baptists. A lot of Baptists that don't even know what they believe. Right. Don't know why they believe it. You know, I say this, it's not enough just to know what you believe. You need to know why you believe it. Because if you don't know why you believe it, well, you'll get swayed with every little wind that blows. Amen. Know what you believe. Get in the Word of God. Amen. I think Brother, Brother Foster would back me up on this statement. Amen. Don't just take his word for it. Get in the book. Check him out with the book. We okay with that, preacher? Whatever I say, whatever Brother Cody Zorn said, Brother Sidney, all of us preachers, man, check us out with the book. Amen. Amen. Get in the Word of God. Have you a walk with God? Amen. Boy, I tell you what, if all you have is what's in these walls, but it don't go home with you, you ain't got much of a walk with God. What the Lord's done in your heart in these weeks of meeting, amen, make sure you take it with you. Take it home with you. Take it to work with you. Take it to school with you. Everywhere you go, amen. This thing of Christianity, it's more than just Sunday and Wednesday, amen. I tell you what, I tell you what, it's a 24-7 thing. Make sure you got to walk with God and then worship in God. You want to strengthen the fire, man, have a, have a worship of God. And again, not just at church. Boy, the reason a lot of our worship is so weak at the church house is because it's weak all week long. There's not much private worship, and so there's not much public worship. But man, if we'd be found faithful to worship God on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, man, when we came in here on Sunday, man, we'd blow the roof off this place worshiping Him, amen? Strengthen that fire. I tell you, old-time worship, Bible worship is dying. Amen. And that's why so many are flocking to these mega churches because at least they have, they, they have some form of imitation of it. Mm-hmm. You're right. At least it's exciting. Mm-hmm. It's not real, Amen. but it's exciting. Yeah. I tell you what, I don't think people are flocking to those churches necessarily, amen, because they like everything that goes on. I just think they don't want dead. Right. By the way, man, I don't want dead either. Yeah. I, man, I like for church to be on fire. But I want it to be the real thing. I want it to be the Holy Ghost moving. The Spirit of God. There's a Spirit behind that other stuff. I mean, I'm not sure it's all the Spirit of God. I'm pretty sure it's not. I tell you what, man, you can take them old hymns as we've done this week and you can sing them with joy and with life. Amen. Preaching don't have to be dead. Amen. Not every preacher is going to get up and preach like your preacher. Not every, not every preacher hacks. Not every preacher gets real loud and animated and move around a lot. As a matter of fact, some of that, some of that preaching doesn't necessarily mean God's on it just because they get loud and move a lot. Don't get caught up on styles when it comes to preaching. Man, God uses all kinds. And I'm glad He does. Amen. But I tell you what, I sure don't care for dead, dry preaching. Man, I like God's hand to be on it. I like for somebody to be excited about what they have to say. If it ain't excited to the preacher, it ain't going to be exciting to the listeners. Amen. Y'all do realize y'all have heard some of the best preaching in America here at Emmanuel Baptist Church. I mean, with the exception of me tonight. Y'all have heard, I mean, you got a, you, your preacher, your preacher is a great preacher. And man, the men that he brings in here, he brings in some great men of God. And by the way, more than even their preaching is just that. They're great men of God. They walk with God. They love God. And they love God's people. Strengthen that fire. You know what else we need to do? We need to show this next generation how important the fire is. You know, Jewish history tells us that this same fire burned until the days of Jeremiah when Nebuchadnezzar and his army rode into Jerusalem and they destroyed the temple, they put the fire out. Brother Jordan, that means that this same fire burned for more than 800 years. Hey, y'all, that's a long time for a fire to burn. 800 years. 
At least nine generations saw that fire burning on the altar. But eventually a generation rose up that said, I just don't see what the big deal is. I, I, I know that fire meant a lot to mama and daddy and grandma and grandpa and so on. I just don't see what the big deal is. I just don't see what the big deal is about, you know, going to church three times a week. I mean, you know, I can go on Sunday and get, get everything I need. Really, how's that working out for you? And I'm going to do the Friday night crowd. But some of you in your mind, you may already be thinking, I don't need this much church. Mm. Oh, I just think, I don't know about all this four weeks of revival. I just don't know. Mm. I know mom and dad made a big deal about the King James Bible, but I just don't see why it's such a big deal. Some of these others are easier to read. Really, are they? You know, most of them other Bibles say this about Joseph. We, we call it Joseph, you know, he had a coat. Yep. And the other one, we call it a tunic. Yep. I never even heard of a tunic until I heard about it in another Bible. <laughs> I have never one time said, hey son, go grab my tunic for me. <laughs> Not one time, have my boys, never one time. <laughs> go get daddy's tunic. I just don't see why we can't have a little bit of rock music, just a little bit, a little bit of rock and roll. I don't know why, why we gotta just sing out of the hymn book all the time, and why can't we, why can't we have a little bit of a rock? Why, what's wrong with a little smoke coming off the stage? I just, I just don't see what the big deal is. I just don't understand the rules. I just, I don't know why I can't stay out as late as I want to and wear whatever I want to, watch whatever I want to, listen to whatever. I just don't see what the big deal is. Yeah, your fire's fixing to be put out. Yeah. Amen. I tell you what, but it's up to us. It's up to us. Mom, Daddy, Grandma, Grandpa, it's up to us to let them know the fire's important. It's yeah. worth it to stand for what's right. It's yeah. worth it to stand for Bible Christianity. It's yeah. worth it. Yeah. It's worth it. I'm afraid too often the young people grow up and leave because they see in us that we just really don't think it's that important. Oh, God, help us to show this next generation how important it is that the fire keeps on burning bright. I looked up the definition of fire. I mean, we all know what fire is, but I just wanted to see what the exact definition was. So I got Webster's 1828 out, and here's what he said about fire. He said it's combustion or burning in which substances combine chemically with oxygen from the air and give out bright light, heat, and smoke. Now, as a Christian, here's how I read that verse, or that definition. Combustion or burning in which substances combine chemically with oxygen from the air, Holy Spirit, and give out a bright light, that's something you can see. Y'all got something the world can see? I mean, something good for them to see? Yeah. They're seeing plenty of bad. Right, right. Can they see Jesus in us? Yeah. It. It'll give out a bright light. It'll give out heat. That's something you can feel. Yeah. You feel heat. Yeah. Hey, listen, I know we're Bible-believing Baptists. We do not go on feelings. Right, right. Amen. Right. I'm glad we got facts. Right. But I'm also glad every now and then, man, I can feel the Lord stirring in my soul, stirring in my heart, amen. Hey, I'm glad, amen, as Gary Duty said, do you know how it feels? I'm glad tonight. I know how it feels to be a child of the King. I know how it feels to be, hey, blood washed on my way to heaven. I know how it feels to be blessed by the hand of God. And I say, it feels real good. It feels real good. It feels real good. I say, hallelujah. I'm glad I got something tonight. I can feel feel glory to God. Amen. Amen. I mean feelings will lead you astray. You can't go on them all the time. But man I'd be scared if I never felt nothing. I'd be nervous. Bright light. Heat. And it gives off smoke. Some friends of ours the other night some storms were in North Carolina and lightning struck their house and it hit the attic, and it didn't, it didn't catch anything on fire, but the house filled up with smoke. You know what, what? One thing I know about smoke, it'll get on you. 
Amen. If you hang around a fire long enough, amen, that smoke, that smell is going to get on you. And then if somebody hangs around you, that smell is going to get on them. Amen. It sticks with you. Amen. It might get on somebody else. I, I've walked into some little hole-in-the-wall country gas stations, walked in and bought a soda or something like that, and walked back out to the car, and I didn't even realize it. My wife's like, you smoking while you was in there? <laughs> I'm like, no, but now that you mentioned, somebody else was. I mean, it'll get on you. Oh, I forgot. You're not supposed to say nothing about smoking in Kentucky. We're close enough to Ohio. I think we're safe, though. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being serious. Uh, Hey, does what you got, is it getting on anybody else? Do you got the kind of joy that's just, I mean, it's helping somebody else and getting on them? Man, I've come to church before with a bad attitude. I hate to admit that. I've come to church with just a bad attitude, but then I get around somebody else and just their joy, their sweetness. Man, it made me happy. Amen. Amen. Do you got anything like that? Do you have anything in your life that somebody else would want? Mm -hmm. good. Good. Amen. Man, I hope the Lord's done something in, in these weeks of meetings sure. that somebody you work with might want. Amen. Somebody in your family might want. They say, man, I need, I need a dose of that. Amen. I tell you, the fire's going out all over America. That's right. Man, COVID hadn't made it better. If anything, it's made it worse. So I just I feel like I have been extremely blessed Amen. to be here, to get to see God moving an hour south of here earlier this week, and just to know that God's still moving. But don't let the fire go out. Don't let it go out. The fact is, you could be sitting here all four weeks, but you still ain't got no fire. You might just be here because your mom or dad made you come. You might just be here because your husband or your wife pressured you to come. Well, if that's the case, I'd crawl into an altar tonight and say, Lord, the old song says, set my soul afire, Lord. Set my soul afire. These, these young people need to see that. They need to see something that's real. Something that's real. Would you stand with me tonight? I won't have a word of prayer. I'll turn it over to the pastor. Don't let the fire go out. Man, God has blessed so richly here. Don't let it go out. Heavenly Father, we sure do love you. We give you praise and glory for what you've done here in this place. This has been a special time. Help us not take it for granted. And Lord, I pray that even if the revival meeting comes to a stop, I pray that the spirit of revival would continue on for a long time. Lord, help these young people to just get in on this thing and not say, well, that's what mom and daddy do. Or, that's what the preacher does. No, help them to say, I, I, I want to be that. I want to be a part of this. I pray the fire will continue to burn. Lord, if there's one here tonight that's lost, show them they need to be saved. And I pray you'd save them by your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.